Hey guys, this is Theo Young with Refine. I just wanted to do a quick video on some corrosion signal characteristics. Um, there's so much to talk about um, whenever you're using a thickness gauge, especially one like the uh, 38 DL Plus. It has so many functions and is most definitely one of the most underused pieces of equipment uh, on, currently on the market. Um, one of the first things I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and it prompts us to do uh, second function Cal Zero and what this doing is it's compensating for the length of the delay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I am using a D790. Um, really all 5 megahertz uh, transducer pretty typical for what we use in the petrochemical industry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on, really helps out well when scanning plates and pipe. Great for ergonomics, right? For that's for the reason for the design. Obviously, if you're going to do something with portholes, there's a screw right here. You can actually take this out, um, slip this sleeve off, and then get you like an extension, right? Make you either buy an extension from Olympus or, you know, maybe get you something from um, Home Depot, cut a slit in it and pull it back up, right? Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and validate our calibration here. Cal a little earlier on, everything looks really good. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is, is that that gain came in really, really high, right? So the 38 actually has a function where um, it auto 80s all of the, of the signals. Um, well, what I mean is, is it brings all the peaks up extremely high, right? And what we want to do is actually bring that peak down, right, to about 80%. So we're going to set a reference level to about 80% so that we can actually see the signals uh, a little better here. Uh, one of the other things that they have is uh, what's called wave adjust. Uh, wave adjust allows you to um, gate separate echoes here, right? So we have our first round trip echo that went through the thickness, right, hit the back wall and came back to us. And then we had, uh, further on in time, uh, an additional echo, right? So um, to validate um, that echo or to move the gate to that echo, we can hit wave adjust here, adjust our extension blank to where it reads the next highest successive e echo. And we see here that it's about two times this, which is what it should be, okay? This is also a great way to validate uh, a lamination signal. Um, and we'll talk about that in, a, in another uh, video, okay? And get this wave just or extension blank off back off the screen. Another great thing is, um, we can actually move this delay out, right? So if I actually hit delay, whoops, I apologize, I hit range there. Let's get back to the one inch range. Second function, delay. I can actually move that over, right, and see that third echo back there on that back wall, right? Again, this is a great tool to use when you're trying to validate uh, a lamination um, further in time, just move the echoes over so that you can see its repeat signals. Okay, I'm going to take the delay back to zero. Um, fat fingers. Um, so after we set our, our reference, um, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to start begin to scan. Now this area here is what I refer to our, as our inspection window. And it's a little difficult to see, but Right here, there's a measuring rate of 16 hertz, okay? Now, this measuring rate can be changed. Um, if you're trying to do something with real quick contact, like a high temperature service, um, you definitely want to move that to max. Um, and if you're trying to find like the smallest uh, um, or the thinnest section in like a pitted area, definitely want to go down to about four hertz, right? So you can really watch the signals move. So I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration of the difference between max and four hertz, right? And then obviously uh, the range in between, um, you can pretty much imagine that, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is go to setup menu, 
I'm gonna go into measurement mode. I'm gonna change this down to mat, go to max, okay? And you can see, you know, signals move fairly quickly. Um, better example of that is probably just to run this over this gauge here. You can see it moves pretty quickly, right? Signals move pretty fast, okay. Put a little bit more coupling. Can never have enough enough coupling, right? I'm kidding. All right, signals move pretty quick. Now, in comparison, move down to four hertz. You can see the signals don't move as fast. I've changed, still about the same kind of stand speed, but definitely not seeing as fast of a movement from the signals as we were previously. Again, this is uh, something to keep in consideration when you're trying to find the thinnest area uh, of a pit, right, or a pitted area. The thinnest or the lowest numerical value of a pitted area, okay? So, I'm gonna change this to about 16 because this is what I'm comfortable with. And we're gonna be watching our inspection area window, like I, as I like to refer to it. And what we're looking for is a decrease in our back wall signal and corrosion will tend to move to the left of the baseline because obviously um, from our entry surface to our back wall we can uh, we're going to see a lower numerical value here right so I'm going to go ahead and start scanning and immediately as we scan we see a decrease and we start to see a roll see that now you notice that my numerical value has completely gone off the screen, right? There's blank. Um, the reason for that is, is my signal has to be above 20% in order for the unit to recognize it, right? So at this point, I'm gonna increase that gain back up. Here, now it's above 20%, it identifies the signal and says, hey, this area here is about 337, okay? So we see it shift, move over. The other thing that you notice is the second back wall is completely gone. See that? We don't really see it, right? And crank, crank up just a little gain just for demonstration purposes. And you see here is gone. Now if I was to go further off in time with the delay, you see, no more back wall, secondary back wall echo like I see it now. Now these little signals here, as we talked about before, these are mode converted echoes, and anytime that you introduce sound at an angle other than zero, you're going to have refraction and of course mode conversion, so we're gonna have some shear waves, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and take this signal, delay it back, okay? You see a movement there? See how it moves to the left? That is definitely a signal characteristic that we're looking for. Once we see it move, we notice that we definitely have a corroded area. The key to this is ensuring that your signal is above 20%, so you're seeing the right echo. All right, then we go get back wall, see good back wall, lose our back wall, move over to the left, right? Here's another one, rolling. Now see, I see a bunch of echoes fighting for my attention, right? This would be a good time to go ahead and switch So I can really try to home in on an area to get the lowest number. Keep an eye on the waveform. So again, a lot of great tools here. We're going to be doing several videos on corrosion, several on laminations, 
uh, just to um, give you a better idea of what those signal characteristics look like. Um, next video that we're going to be doing is um, showing echo to echo versus standard measurement, maybe doing and showing you guys how to compensate and also setting manual to echo or um, manual mode. Instead of going auto echo to echo, we're going to use manual echo to echo, right? I'm going to show you how to set uh, each echo um, for the, from reading from the first uh, interface echo to the back interface echo so that we make sure that we exclude any any set uh, coding. Um, thanks for your guys time today and uh, if, be sure to uh, reach out to us if you have any questions at all.